Well, thank you, Julie, very much for agreeing to give us um, your story, um, particularly as you're recovering from a cold. And I really appreciate the, your time and uh, effort in, in coming today and, and um, talking to us. Um, what I wanted to do really was to perhaps start by saying, um, could you tell us a little bit about how you got into debt and how it was living in debt? Um, firstly, I found myself in a women's aid refuge. I was living there six uh, months. During that time, um, I didn't have money for a month because I had to wait for my wages to come in. And because I was working, um, it was difficult because I wasn't allowed to get any grant funding or any support um, to help with finance. So gladly, um, Sir Vince de Paul helped Women's Aid. So I had food in the refuge that my daughter and I could eat. Um, I had to get taxis to work because I wasn't um, near my workplace. So um, I had to use what little money I did have for taxis. Um, I did take some time off work just to try and get myself sorted so I could get back to work. Um, so that's basically when it all started. Um, now, when my wages did come through, unfortunately, again, because I was working, I wasn't entitled to housing benefit. Mm -hmm. So um, my wages came in, I went down, gave the wages to Women's Aid for my rent for the room that my daughter and I were sharing. And again, that left me with no money for um, food. So again, um, to visit Paul, they had food for the Women's Aid Refuge, right. which was great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it took a while because uh, my working tax credits were stopped and I had to reapply for working tax credits. And um, the wages wasn't enough until I was able to get the uh, working tax credits sorted out. Right. Um, but Women's Aid were a great help and Svista Paul at that time. I, at that stage, I'd never heard of Christians Against Poverty. So um, anyway, we after the six months, we were offered a housing executive house. Mm -hmm. And I was just totally blown away. I thought, oh wow, I'm gonna have a house. So we moved in. And again, because I was working, I wasn't entitled to um, any financial support for beds or mm -hmm. furniture or anything for the house. Mm -hmm. So again, Sir Vince de Paul, they turned up on the doorstep yeah. and they were like, oh, we must get you beds. And I was like, no, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And like, no, we're going to help you here. And um, they said to my daughter, would you like a TV? And I was like, I can't afford the TV license. Said, oh, you'd be grand. Don't you worry, we'll sort you out. And I was just so blessed yeah. at their support. Yeah. And I was so relieved, even though deep down inside I was convinced that I didn't. But I did have treatment, medications, and um, that so was presumably great. all this time you were still using credit cards for basic. I um, had to because the, the employment support <clears throat> allowance wasn't enough. So when did you realise that debt was becoming a problem? Well, basically, um, eventually the employment support allowance did go up, and um, I was given low mobility, mm -hmm. which helped with bills as well. Right. Um, but I still couldn't pay off the credit cards. Um, I was kind of, you know, how can I deal with this because, you know, there was letters coming through, there was phone calls coming, mm -hmm. and because I wasn't well, I wasn't really able to communicate what I wanted to say over the phone because I was just too tired. Yes. So I sat and rang my dad, and I said, Daddy, I have this issue and I really just don't know, know where to turn, and at the time I was so ill I couldn't go to church. So I hadn't been to church in over five weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was really finding that I'd lost connection with people mm -hmm. because I didn't feel emotionally ready to tell people um, that I'd had a split up, that I was in a refuge. Yeah. I didn't want people knowing my business basically because you know I wanted to keep it quiet between myself and my yeah. daughter. Yeah. Uh, so we could work it out together. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad says, well, Julie, this Christians Against Poverty. He says, um, give him a call. He says, I'll talk to them here at this end. 
and then you came out uh, with Kirsty, mm -hmm. and it was just like a weight lifted off my shoulders. It was like I've actually got someone here who's going to help sort this out. So I remember sitting down with you with my bills mm -hmm. and with the credit card mm -hmm. and saying, "Now this is my situation. This is what's happened. What do I do?" Yeah. And I remember you immediately said that you would pray for me, yeah. and that just calmed me down. It was just someone cares and someone wants to help my situation because I just didn't know where to turn. Um, and to be honest, I think it was hindering me getting better because the stress was adding on to the not knowing of what was wrong and what condition I truly had. Yes. And waiting for appointments and trying to get to doctor's appointments and trying to get my daughter's new family that she had married into and yeah. um, getting them to help um, get there was still a lot going on, wasn't there? There was still a lot going on and um, I did need a lot of counselling as well. Mm -hmm. um, and how did you find working with CAP? Oh, it was just such a blessing because I just was lost, basically. Because, uh, you know, it's like, what do you do? Uh, I can't ring these people up. Um, it's just... Um, were you ringing CAP or were you ringing your creditors? I couldn't ring the creditors because they weren't very nice on the phone. No. Um, very critical. Um, when I was trying to explain that it wasn't my fault mm. that I'd taken ill and I'd had been in a situation where I had to, I was homeless basically. Yes. Um, they just were very nasty and very, you know, uh, how can I put it, very blunt um, on the phone as if it was my fault and I'd done this on purpose. So did that change when you were working with Cap? Well, Cap took all that away. Yeah, yeah. Cap mm -hmm. rang on my behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, they even said to me, look, don't even open the letters. Put them in an envelope and send them all to us and we'll deal with everything. So Julie, you've um, now been working with Cap for quite a while. Um, how are things now? Things at the minute are amazing. Um, since then, I have been able to go back to university. Um, I'm doing my teaching um, training. So basically, I can teach people with all abilities, all ages, um, creative movement. Um, I also do uh, Swedish massages, um, hand and arm massages, things that um, I can do that I can now go and do permitted work with um, Disability Action, with their support, um, which is something that is fantastic for me because it means I have the opportunity to go self-employed and um, just be independent. And um, I just feel so blessed that my dad got me in touch with Christians Against Poverty because um, they have helped me so much. Um, and the fact that they took all the burden by taking the phone calls and the letters and enabling me to concentrate and getting back and getting my health back and basically getting my life back. You know, I was able to go back to church and, um, you know, get my friends and be able to have connections with people again because basically I just cut myself off from everybody because I didn't want them to know I was in debt. And I didn't want them to know um, of my situation at home. But being able to have people around me to talk to me and bring me back to my confidence level, that I was able to, you know, go back and start living my life again. Well, Julie, you're the one who's done it with the Lord's help. Yeah, definitely. And with Cap's help. Definitely. And it's just lovely to mm -hmm, see, mm -hmm. as you say, life getting back together again. Yeah, it's great. I'm in a really good place now. Um... Well, we've heard from Julie what it's like to be a CAP client. Um, she's the one that's had to do all the difficult work of, of actually working through on her plan. And without that, it wouldn't work. But together and with the Lord's help, you can see that it's really turned her life around. And if you can identify with some of what Julie had to deal with at the beginning, and you're in that situation now, then do please call CAP. It's never too late, 
and we can always help and there's always hope.